Hey guys, I'm Eric and welcome to State of Build. Today we're going to build a custom lightsaber hilt. I'm going to take you through the process step by step, so if you're interested, stay tuned. This is the lightsaber hilt we're going to be building today. Now this isn't your ordinary lightsaber tutorial. This saber is made out of metal, it's combat ready, it's got some serious weight to it. It's made from stock aluminum tube and other parts you can buy from the hardware store or online. All the material that I used to build this is in the description down below. The best part is all of this costs only about $45. The reason I chose aluminum for this build is because it's easy to work with. Woodworking tools can cut it and the only tools you need to build this, most people already have in their garage like I do. So that being said, what tools will you need? A miter saw, a hand saw and a miter box, a drill, drill bits, an 8.30 second tap, a rotary tool with a cutoff wheel, files, sandpaper up to 3000 grit, clear five minute epoxy, and clamps. So the two aluminum tube sizes we're gonna be using today are this one and one quarter inch outside diameter and this one and a half inch outside diameter. They both have an eight inch thick wall so if you do your maths correctly, that means they'll fit inside of each other perfectly. And this is the core basis for our design. We're just gonna be cutting pieces so that way they fit on top of each other like this in a pretty pattern per se. Now the inside diameter of this smaller tube is exactly one inch, which we did on purpose because this, the diameter of this polycarbonate tube, which is gonna be our blade, is also exactly one inch. So these two will fit together. Let's start with the main body of the lightsaber. You want the length of the body to be a few inches less than the total length of the lightsaber that you want to be. So in this case, I want my lightsaber to be about 10 inches long. The pommel is going to stick out a little bit and the emitter is going to stick out a little bit. So I'm going to mark this about two inches less than what I want it to be at about eight inches. And that's where we're going to cut. Before you make any cuts on any saw, make sure you're wearing ear protection eye protection and in this case you're also going to want to wear a glove because these metal shavings are really hot and burn your hands. After you make a cut you're going to have all these jagged sharp edges on the inside and the outside and you're going to want to take these off so you don't cut yourself but also the tubes don't fit inside of each other if you have these so we're going to use these files to uh, remove those. Next we're going to work on the emitter. So the emitter we're going to have a 45 degree angled cut, something similar like this. That's going to give it a nice decorative look. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually measure out an inch from the end of the larger tube. Mark that and then that's going to be exactly where we make our cut. So if you look at this horizontally from that cut angle, our goal is to make about this rough cut. The easiest way to make this cut is to adjust the blade in the back and angle it like this and cut across like this on your line. I'm actually going to skip this cut because if you notice here on the other side I already have a 45 degree cut from another build and I'm just going to use this. I'm going to cut one inch here to give the same effect that we're looking for on this side. Next we're going to cut the pommel of the saber, also known as the bottom. So what you're going to do is on the larger tube, cut about an inch of a half, mark that. We're going to cut this and then file the edges. The design for this is to alternate 1 8 inch slices of this big tube and these rubber o-rings. These o-rings are about 1 and 3 8 inch and 1 8 inch thick. So that's the plan for this design. So we're going to measure this at 1 8 of an inch 
We'll take it over to the saw. I'm gonna be cutting out a good number of these. What I did is I set up this stop block here with a clamp. And this stop block is measured exactly where the blade would come down and cut each one of these at one eighth of an inch. I do this so that way you can cut a ton of these at a time without having to measure each time. Here are all the rings cut out. I did about 12. I'm not exactly sure how many I'm gonna need, but I would say 10 to 12 is a good bet. transition between the body and the grip. So grab the larger tube, measure about half an inch from the end, mark it, cut and file. Next, we're gonna drill and tap the holes in these three pieces that are gonna mount them to the body. We have these small set screws here that we're gonna to need to install in these pieces and then that will press up against the body to hold it in place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure about a quarter inch from the edge of each of these pieces. For the emitter, we wanna do it on the back side over the curve. So right about there. We're gonna mark that. Same thing on the pommel. Same thing on the transition piece. These two pieces doesn't matter. And then we're gonna take our hammer and nail and mark that area where we're going to be drilling to help keep the drill bit in line. I'm using a drill press to do this, but you can just as easily use a hand drill. Just clamp the material down so it won't roll around. Lubrication while drilling isn't necessary, but it will help keep your tools in good condition. Next we're going to align the emitter onto the main body of the lightsaber and align it to where we want to go and then mark that so we can drill the holes in the main body. So we're just going to twist this in there. I'm actually going to do it in two places because I want to be able to adjust this. So one there and one about there. the holes. I don't have a handle for my tap so I just use this adjustable wrench. Again lubrication is not required but will increase the life of your tools.
at this point, if you put it all together, this is what you should have. As you can see, I installed all the set screws and all these pieces, so everything's all tight together. And also the uh, in the emitter, we put in the thumb screw. So this isn't coming apart. So what we're gonna do to clean it up a little bit is these transition pieces, we're gonna bevel these, these out here and here, give it a nice 45 degree angle from the outer tube to the inner tube. We're also going to bevel this pommel piece right here to give it a nice transition off into the pommel insert, which we'll do later. And we're also going to bevel this inside piece here to give a nice transition to the future blade. Now this beveling is optional. This is a pretty difficult cut to do and it takes a lot of time. So you don't necessarily have to do this. You can just sand down the corners to make it smooth and rounded and move on from there and completely skip this step. But in my opinion, this step makes a big difference between the quality of the lightsaber, giving it a much cleaner look. So we're gonna set this off 45 degrees like this. This is the piece that we're cutting. I put some scrap in here to help me hold it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come down and cut just the tippy edge on it and then rotate, cut again, rotate, cut again, rotate, cut again until we have a 45 degree bevel on this edge all the way. And this is what you should get, something like this. It's a 45 degree bevel all the way around. It's still rough, we're gonna sand this and clean this up. show it here are the other two bevels these are my practice runs so that's why you didn't see it next we're gonna be installing this piece for a cover tech clip onto the pommel I didn't make this piece I bought this piece from the custom saber shop they're pretty cheap so on the pommel itself opposite to where we have our set screw we're gonna be placing this guy it should be a perfect fit for a one and a half inch diameter piece so I'm gonna put it right in the middle and then I'm gonna mark it and drill and tap a hole for it drill the main hole for the button as you can see mine's already drilled I did it but I lost the footage so I'm gonna be redoing it on this scrap piece of metal for you guys but you're gonna want to measure the center of the button to be about where you want all of your pieces to fit so my pieces are gonna fit just about like that so I measured it in the center which for me was about two and a half inches from the top if you're gonna be running two buttons same same concept just make sure that you equally space them one here and one here instead of one smack dab in the middle so every button is different my button is going to require a half inch drill bit so i'm going to start with a small one go up to a medium and then go to the full size drill bit step it up make it a little bit easier just check your button size to make sure that you get the right size drill bit Because these buttons have a little bevel, they're not going to sit flush on this rounded surface. So what you're going to have to do, like I did on this body, is file down a flat surface for the button to sit at. I'm not going to show this, it's fairly easy to do. You just take your file and just start filing out the size of the button and then continue to file until it fits like this and then just get it straight. 
Now we're gonna work on the pommel insert, the piece that's gonna cover up this bottom area. It's gotta be porous because later on we're gonna be putting a speaker in here, so we want the sound to come out the bottom of this. I found this weird decorative metal piece. I have no idea what this is from, but I'm gonna use this for my pommel. You guys can use anything plastic with holes in it, um, just sheet aluminum that you can custom drill holes in. You can find sink strainers and cut them and fit them in here. But basically we're just gonna cut this with a rotary tool with a cutting bit, reinforced cutting bit, um, just to this exact size so that it fits in there perfectly. And then we're gonna trim up onto it. Make sure you guys wear eye protection when you cut with these tools. If that blade pops, you could lose an eye very easily. So guys, this is what you should get. I kept inching up on that insert until it was a near perfect fit into the bottom of the pommel. And then once, once it was loose enough where I could get it in and out, I uh, used the five minute epoxy and epoxied it all the way around. As you can see, it's still, the epoxy is still there. This is the next day, I let it cure overnight. Okay guys, we're now officially on the last step, finishing process. We're gonna sand this down, we're gonna buff it to a shine. As you probably already noticed, this top piece, I already did. I sanded this down, I buffed it. You can see the, uh, the bevel, it's all nice and smooth now compared to these ones down here. We're gonna buff this with sandpaper starting at a 120 grit and moving all the way up to 3000 grit. The goal is to get rid of all these scratches, all these imperfections with the larger grit, with the smaller grits I mean, and then once that's gone, we're gonna move up higher and higher grit to get like a, a polish. So this is the polish I'm going for, not a mirror shine. It's not perfect, but it definitely looks way better than this rough aluminum down here. I did a little bit more sanding off camera. Basically, the more time you put into it, the better finish you're gonna get. This is good enough for me. I'm not going for a perfect mirror finish. I'm just going for something that's shinier than the body. The body, I'm gonna keep this brushed aluminum. It's duller, so it'll give it a different contrast. But now we're gonna do a final installation.
guys, here we have the final assembly of the hilt. You can kind of tell the color difference between the shined and the not shined. The only other thing I added was this small hole on the side. This is going to be for a low battery indicator. I didn't show that in the video, but that's a quick, easy add. If you want to see the full electronics installation tutorial for this hilt, subscribe so you don't miss when that comes out. I will be posting a new video on this project about every other week. If you enjoyed this tutorial, leave a like and a comment what you thought. I hope to see you in the next video.